Hi there, I'm Madeline Morbid, and in this video I'm going to show you my process for painting Headache. There's actually quite a lot of prep that happens before you finally get paint on the canvas. So first, uh, you actually have to have a place to paint. I moved into this apartment recently, so I needed to set up my painting mini studio. I set up in the kitchen because it had the best lighting and the only place I really had. Next, I have to prep the canvas I'm going to be painting. So when you first purchase a canvas, it comes with these little tiny wooden sticks and those are actually supposed to be used to stretch out the remaining fabric so it's not bowy and it's quite tight to paint on. Then I like to include a couple extra layers of gesso on top of the already prepped canvas. This just makes it a lot easier to mix paint and it creates a very smooth texture. So my goal with these paintings was to actually create something to hang up in my own space since I wasn't able to bring all of my paintings when I moved. Um, so I was really inspired by Memento Mori and I know I wanted to include some pretty gold element. And especially since I had all these different gold paints to try out, I wanted to test out and see which one would work best. And for this painting, I ended up going with gold leaf just because it felt more like an oil paint. So now that I have a rough sketch of what I want to do, I like to make a very detailed reference photo, um, usually by photo bashing. So those flowers you see are actually from my parents' garden. I think it's nice to include your own reference photos when you can, especially if you see really beautiful flowers. But of course, I don't have my own reference photos of a human ribcage and a skull. And those lines on the reference are just to help me when I'm sketching on the canvas to line everything up. The next part that you have to do before actually painting is creating the colors that you're going to paint with. So I really like to use a glass palette. It's easier to clean and I think it's a cheap option, especially since this is just a photo frame from the dollar store. So when I first start mixing for a piece, I put down all of the colors I know I'll eventually be using. Usually I like to put the neutral colors to one side. So burnt sienna, uh, umber, black, those colors to one side and then the primary colors to another side. And that was just a flash of all the colors I ended up using for this piece. When I sketch on canvas, I like to use pen instead of pencil because when you use pencil and then try and paint on top of it, the graphite smears and makes the painting look very muddy. So I prefer just to use pen and kind of correct mistakes as they come. Here, I'm just toning the canvas so that it's easier to see when I put color down. The next step is to put down basic color. So usually I like to just put down a light, medium, and dark tone for every single color I plan on using in the piece. Now the main goal for this first color layer is just to get color everywhere on the canvas so that there's no pockets or gaps of white or toned canvas. Then once you have the basic colors on the canvas, you can start going in and trying to make each element 3D. I like to usually put dark color first and then lighter color as I add on top to create a more 3D effect. So the dark is in the background, it's a little bit further into the canvas and the white bright spots are a little bit on top. For the skull, I only really used burnt sienna, white, and black. So the majority of the color that you're seeing is just burnt sienna with various levels of white included. The dark elements of the, the missing pieces, so the eye, the nose, that is when I actually added black into it. When I'm putting down paint on canvas, usually I'll just slap it on and then later come around with a dry brush to try and blend in the edges of the color that I want so that it's a more uniform shape. Then for this teeth detail, I ended up having to switch brushes so it was a very thin 
flat brush instead of a brush that holds a lot of paint. For me, when I paint, instead of focusing on the huge picture, because that can be quite overwhelming, I just focus on every single individual piece and trying to make it 3D. So that's what I did with the teeth, trying to get each tooth to look a little bit 3D and not just flat on the canvas. The next big element of this piece was the flowers. So my reference photo had a bunch of detail and a bunch of leaves, but I decided to take a more simple approach to the flower and just paint the blobs where I saw a blob instead of each individual petal. And I think this is totally acceptable as an artist, as long as someone just looks at your piece and can say, yes, that's a flower you've been successful. I then had to go back through and make sure that the black was all the same gloss level. So that's what I'm doing now. Then I ended up putting on the ash cross with just my finger and a piece of fabric, which ultimately stained my finger and I had paint all up in my nail. Um, but it looked really realistic when you get up close. In my original idea, I had really tiny little flowers all around in those black spaces, but after seeing the piece, I felt like it needed stars instead of more flowers, so I ended up switching my mind and going with stars instead. A lot of times with painting, the painting looks quite ugly until the last step, so my advice would be to continue to push through the ugly phase and just know eventually it's going to look quite nice. 